Okay, let's go ahead and look at how to solve equations with rational expressions. Just something that we did uh, in example two, but we'll go ahead and look at it in depth here. Now remember, when you are solving an equation with variables in the denominator, okay, that is the important thing. Anytime you have a variable in the denominator, we must determine the values that cause these denominators to equal zero because anytime you have a variable in the denominator, you will have some numbers for which the denominator will equal zero. Uh, by identifying those, you can reject these values uh, if they appear as part of your possible solutions. The reason you want to reject these values from your solutions is because for these values, your denominators will equal zero. So you want to keep this in mind. Anytime you start working with uh, rational expressions that have a variable in the denominator. All right, let's go ahead and start with a simple example here. What we are doing in this example is we are finding all the values for which uh, at least one of the denominators is equal to zero. Now remember, we are not solving this equation here. We're only trying to find the values for which the denominator will be zero. Now you can see you have two denominators here, x and x minus 3. So you will take each one of these denominators and set it equal to zero. And basically, we're trying to find when will the denominators equal zero. Now, for the first denominator, x, x will equal zero when x itself is zero, right? When x itself is zero, your denominator will be zero. For the second equation, if you solve this, x will equal uh, 3. When x equals 3, your denominator equals 0 because, again, 3 minus 3 will give you 0. So the idea is uh, for x equals 0 and x equals 3, your denominator will equal 0. Now remember, if we were solving this equation, we would want to discard 0 or 3 if they showed up in our solution set, okay? Let's look at one more example. Same thing, you want to find all the values for which the denominator equals 0, but we are not trying to solve this, okay? So here you can see your denominators are uh, polynomials here. The first one is a trinomial, the second one is a binomial term. Now, to try and determine when each one of these uh, denominators will equal 0, just like we did earlier, take each denominator and set it equal to 0. So x squared plus 9x minus 10 equals 0. Okay. Same thing with the other one, x squared minus 16 equals 0. Now, you can see that this is a trinomial term, so if you're trying to find when will this denominator equal 0, you will have to factor x squared plus 9x minus 10. And um, just like we have been doing so far, you have your leading coefficient as x squared. So this tells you your first two terms in the factors will be x and x. You have negative 10 as your last term. So factors of negative 10, which will add to give us a positive 9, which will have to be plus 10 minus 1, okay? So once you factor this, you have x plus 10, uh, x minus 1. You can go ahead and take each one of these and set it equal to 0, okay? Now, when you solve each one of these uh, sub equations, you will end up with x equals negative 10 or x equals 1. What this is telling us is when x equals negative 10 or 1, this denominator here will equal 0. Okay. Now let's see what happens with the second denominator. You can see this is x squared minus 16. Now again, you can write 16 as 4 squared. So this is your difference of squares here. And to factor this, we will use the difference of squares formula which will be x plus 4, x minus 4, okay? 
Now just like we did on this side, for this side also, you will go ahead and set each one of these uh, factors equal to zero. Uh, we'll go ahead and write this down here, x minus 4 equals zero. So with this one, x plus 4 equals zero, you will end up with x equals negative 4. Or for the other guy here, x minus 4 equals zero, you will end up with x equals 4. So what does this tell us? Same thing that we did here. It means that when x equals negative 4 or positive 4, the second denominator will equal 0, which again tells us the same thing. You want to discard negative 4 and positive 4 if it shows up in your solution set. So basically for this whole problem together, you would say for x equals negative 10, x equals 1, x equals negative 4 or for x equals 4 for any of these four values your denominator will again equal 0 okay so again you would want to keep those uh, outside of your solution set you will not include those Alright, so I think these two examples should give you a pretty good idea of what we are trying to do here.